All right, uh, sorry about the technical difficulties. And you're seeing me. Why are you seeing me? Uh. Hello, everybody. Switch. There we go. Apparently, I can't get the whole house in the picture. There we go. Hey. I'm going to take y'all on a little tour of Fredericksburg. Hey, Chilled. Hey, Abby. Hey, Momo. All right, this is the St. James House. It was built in 1768, and it was originally owned by James Mercer. James Mercer was a member of the Virginia House of Burgesses, and he was the first judge of the general court in Fredericksburg, and the attorney who drew up the will for Mary Washington, and he lived in this house. The house has been elegantly restored with an outstanding collection of antiques. The collection includes 17th and 18th century porcelains, brass, pewter, and portraits. The house is particularly noted for the collection of antique furniture and decorative arts assembled by Daniel Bressling and William Tollerton, who restored St. James in the mid-1960s. And that is the St. James house. All right. Now we're going to walk up to the next historic place. Sorry, the wind is blowing here. It's blowing my papers all around. All right. The next place we're going to go to is the Mary Washington House. George Washington purchased this house for his mother back in 1772 for 275 pounds. Mary Washington spent her last few years in the white frame house. It sits on the corner of Charles and Lewis Street. That's the main office door. Probably should be across the street because it's too close to it. You can't see. If you got any kiddos, you can bring your kiddos. What in the world just happened? Okay. My phone just did a gimbal dump, I think. Anyway, July 22nd through the 25th, 6 to 8 p.m., you can bring the kiddos and do a Twilight in History. And this is the main entrance.
beautiful flowers. The home of Mary, the mother of Washington, 1772 to 1789. I can't see very well. And that is the Washington Inn. It's being restored. It's the Betty Washington Inn, which was Mary Washington's sister. All right, I'm going to turn back around so you can get a good look of the Mary Washington house. That is the tool shed where all the tools are. I don't know if we can see inside that door, but we're going to take you over there. That's the garden. And then inside that building, I can't go in there because I haven't paid. But inside that building, you can see... A bunch of tools and bowls that they used back in the day. All right, and that's the Mary Washington house. Now I'm going to take you to Kenmore Plantation, which is a little bit of a longer walk. So here we go. Enjoy this nice, beautiful day. Look at that nice old staircase. Yeah. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. I wish we were in full bloom so you could see the all the beautiful flowers. The houses down here are amazing. Sorry. I can't see the comments. It's so sunny. I like the old brick buildings. Yes, they're beautiful. I'll let you see the old houses as we walk to Kenmore. This one I think is haunted. It's all run down. I wish I could see the comments. The sun is just way too bright. Maybe we'll get some shade. 
here in a moment. All right. Welcome to the historic Kenmore Plantation. This is one of the houses. This was rebuilt. There's a total of one, two, three, four, five, five buildings on this property. That's one of them. If you notice, there's regular sidewalks everywhere else. And when you come up to the historic stuff, you have brick sidewalks. That is the main home in the middle. That is Kenmore. Stand by, sorry. I got my notes all messed up. Okay. This house was built in 1776 for Fielding and Betty Washington Lewis, the sister of George Washington. He was a planter and a successful merchant in town. Their plantation grew tobacco, wheat, and corn by the labor of slaves. The Lewises enslaved more than 80 people on this 1,300-acre plantation, including a number of domestic slaves. The mansion's rear frontage was oriented to the Rappahannock River for easier transportation. Betty's mother, Mary Ball Washington, was buried on these grounds, which she had liked to visit. Lewis's descendants sold the house and property in 1797 after Betty Washington's death. A memorial was erected in 1894 at the Mary Washington gravesite, which is down the street. Mind you, this used to be 1,300 acres, and now it's three acres. So all these houses you see back here, they weren't here. This was all a plantation and fields. That light blue house just sold for a million dollars. The dark blue house just sold for a million five. Okay. Now we're going to walk through here. So the left and the right were quarters for the slaves. That's where the slaves stayed in the two small houses on the left and the right. The main house is where Betty Lewis and Fielding Lewis lived. And this is all garden area it's very beautiful in the summer i'll go live again during the summer after everything blooms and then it goes all the way around over here it's a beautiful old building now this is the back side of it. We came in the back entrance. Actually, this was the kitchen. I'm sorry. I guess all the slaves lived in the other house. This was the kitchen. Oh, I'm in the shade. I can see comments. Ah, they disappeared. Yeah, they may not all lived in that one house. I'm not sure.
tree. Tree's huge. And another huge tree over there. And that is the front of Kenmore Inn. Beautiful old building. On my notes here said during the Civil War, the plantation house and outbuildings were used as a makeshift Union military hospital after the Battle of the Wilderness in 1864. It was also used by federal troops and slaves. So. Built in 1775, Kenmore was the home of Betty Washington Lewis. George Washington's younger sister and her husband, Fielding Lewis, known for its elaborate decorative plaster work and architectural significance, the house has been restored to its original appearance. Today, Kenmore tells the story of the Lewis family's contribution to the founding of this country. There's little plaques. Beautiful cast iron gate. And it's surrounded by brick all the way around. And this is a registered historic national landmark. April 6th, I believe. They're having a colonial fair here. April 6th from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m., I believe. All right, across the way Oops. I tell you what, me and this toggle switch always fight. Across the way, you'll see another brick wall. That will be the beginning of the Fredericksburg Confederate Cemetery. Six Confederate generals and more than 3,300 Southern soldiers are buried in here. 2,184 of them are unknown. Watch me get a copy right strike for that stupid music. <laughs> Somebody opened the floodgates of cars. Bear with me. How you doing? I know him. He does all the grass for my clients. A life-size zinc statue with granite base of a soldier on dress parade is an impressive monument. It was dedicated in 1884 to the Confederate dead. The cemetery is open daily We're going to go in. 
entrance is up here. I'm actually going to cross the street so you can see the beautiful entrance because I won't be able to get that being that close to it. walk to the entrance. A lot of people are buried in here. That cute old doggy. There's a doggy coming to see me. Okay. Say hi to Freedom Puppy. Hi, Freedom Puppy. <laughs> She's adorable. Enjoy this wonderful day. Sorry, I gotta wait. People coming from everywhere. All right, we're going in. Stones, all the crosses. This one's really neat. This is a huge cross. George and Ethel Doggett were buried here in. 1911 Willie Redwood is buried here He was buried here in 1871. And there's a lot of monuments in here.
Uh, everybody I just showed you, they knew the names. Where we're going now is where the, all the unnamed soldiers were buried. All these little grave markers here are for the unknown soldiers. Some of them actually have names. The first couple have names. What is wrong with this gimbal? It's going to dump on me again, y'all. All right. It's a little monument. Most of these are unnamed. You got two there that are named and then all the rest are unnamed. And it just keeps going and going and going all the way back there. Alright, this is the statue to the dead Confederates. Anybody know who that is on top? Anybody? Anybody know who that general is? In honor of the Confederate soldiers who died in Fredericksburg in 1861 through 1862 and buried in Barton Saint Cemetery, no record of reinterment when the site was reused in 1920. You got the Alabama 14th Infantry buried in here, North Carolina, people from Tennessee, Arkansas, Texas. Georgia and Virginia. It was dedicated May 1992 by the Ladies Memorial Association of Fredericksburg, Virginia. All right, and this is our Confederate cemetery. Oh, we got a tombstone down. Tombstone down. That said. Here's another cool tombstone memorial. It's huge. I'm going to try to get permission to come in here at night and try to talk to the spirits.
This is going to conclude our tour of the Confederate Cemetery. I got two more things to show you. We got to walk to them. I will not be able to show you where Mary Washington is buried at today. It's too long of a walk. Here comes our trolley giving a tour. Maybe I should have got on that and went for a ride. I'm not quite sure what this first monument is. I've never walked over to it. But we're going to do it today. All right, this is a monument. Oh, I might be standing on a grave. Let me scoot to the side. George Rogers Clark, 1752 to 1818, in grateful acknowledgement of the valor and the strategic victories of General George Rogers Clark, son of old Virginia. The Paul Revere chapter of the Daughters of the American Revolution of Muncie, Indiana, devote this tablet. No hero of the American Revolution served with more sacrifice, fortitude, and dauntlessness, courage, and no hero has accomplished greater victories against greater odds. The old Northwest owes its freedom from the British tyranny to this distinguished patriot and soldier, dedicated in Fredericksburg, Virginia, April 1929. General George Roger Clark. All right. Now this is a statue of Hugh Mercer. Get a little closer and I'll read it to you. I think Hugh Mercer was a general as well. Yes, he was. Sacred to the memory of Hugh Mercer, Brigadier General in the Army of the United States. He died on the 12th of January, 1777, of the wounds he received on the 32nd of the same month, 32nd. Is that what this is? 22nd. Sorry, I had to get closer. 22nd of the same month near Princeton in New Jersey. Bravely, 
he defended the liberties of America. The Congress of the United States and its testimony of his virtues and their gratitude have caused this monument to be erected. And that's his mon monument. There's a freedom doggy up there. There he goes. The white pit bull. And some more historic houses. They're all along here. Uh, Mary Washington. You can probably see down there the very tip of that monument way down there on the left where that car just came from that's where George Washington's mother is buried unfortunately I don't have time to walk down there I have to go back to work at 2 alright I'm going to go over here in the shade and try to read some comments if it will allow me It's warm out here today. I'm sweating. Nope, it won't let me read. Oh, there they are. Nope. Yes, we did, Jill. We had so many taken down. I was down in Richmond when they took down Robert E. Lee's statue. And that was uh, Robert E. Lee in the cemetery, too. I don't think I ever told y'all that. The statue in the cemetery, that was Robert E. Lee. They haven't come for that yet. I guess because it's in the cemetery, it's not out on the street for people to see. And this is still Kenmore Plantation. And some more nice old houses. Another entrance. There it is from the side. That's the main office. That's where you go to check in. Well, that include, concludes my tour of the day. Sorry I couldn't see your comments. It's so bright. Only time I could see them was in the shade, which is right now. I'm in the shade. All right, everybody. Thanks for coming. That's a little taste of Fredericksburg, Virginia. I will do some more as time allows. Have a nice day. Bye.